Phil, it's been nearly five years since your last fully-fledged solo album. Did mm -hmm. you approach this new album with any particular concept or goal in mind? I don't really approach what I do with, it, with an idea, a concept at first. You know, I just sort of sit down at a piano and start writing or synthesizing a keyboard, whatever, and just start writing. Sometimes it can be a sound that motivates me. Sometimes it can be a drum machine pattern that gets me going. Sometimes it's just fiddling around the piano and a chord sequence sounds nice. So there are no hard and fast rules to these things. You just sit down and you start making a nice noise, really, and um, honing those ideas into shape. And you seem to be stretching out a bit more on this album, both lyrically and musically, compared to the last three solo projects. Yeah, there are more lyrics on this album, a lot of lyrics on this album that people would not expect from me, I suppose, because, again, what we're talking about, of what they think that I am, you know. Um, but there are some things that, that, that bother me, the same as anybody else, and I've, I've written about them on this album, maybe for the first time. Um, and things, really, they kind of, my songs develop, as I say, you know, I, I, the song about homelessness, I mean, I, I wrote that, the lyrics came at the same time as the music. I didn't sit down and say, I want to write a song about homelessness, you know. It just came out that way. And uh, the same thing with That's Just The Way It Is, which is about Northern Ireland, you know, there's, um, the South African thing, I guess, was more me thinking, I want to do this, I want to write about this. But so uh, there's still sort of the love songs, uh, you know, on the album, but there, there are, there's a different facet of my writing, which I don't think I've ever done before. And I suppose a lot of people will be surprised about it. Hopefully they'll be surprised about it anyway. Do you see this as a new development or a further extension of an ongoing theme in your musical life, the songs being pointedly social and political? Well, yeah, as you, as you mentioned, I mean, on the last album, for instance, there have been songs which have been along this, this road, if you like. I mean, Land of Confusion was a Genesis song, which was about, you know, world problems, if you like. Um, I didn't write the lyrics for that. Mike Rutherford wrote the lyrics for that, so I can't be held responsible, if you like. Um, for that particular song, but on No Jacket Required, there's a song called Long Long Way to Go, which was again about Northern Ireland, and it was um, a song about people, you know, they just turn off the television and, and it's as if it, it stops happening as soon as they turn off the television. So um, I've written songs like, you know, with social comment, if you like, before, but I think because a song like One More Night comes after a song like Long Long Way to Go, people tend to think of One More Night as what I do, rather than the social comment stuff. Take Me Home was um, a song which I'm sure a lot of people didn't really think what the lyrics were about on that, but that was really about people being locked away in old people's homes or mental asylums, if you like, and, and being left to, you know, to rot, almost. Um, lobotomized, you know. So I've written songs like that, but so people don't, they tend to think of the hits rather than those songs. Um, hopefully, and with the album title, but seriously, I've, it, will, it will at least entice people to think, hang on, there might be something else going on here than there has previously been. You've had several special guests on the album. Could you talk about how they got involved, starting mm. with David Crosby? What I wanted him for was his harmony, his sense of harmony and, and what he, he picks out different melodies out of the air when most people wouldn't think of them. So um, I tried to get him for face value, so a lot of people would think it's an odd, odd combination, but I did try and get him for my first album, but he was just not around. He was out on his boat and uh, couldn't do it. And when I met him eight years later at the Atlantic 40th anniversary gig in New York, I went out to him and introduced myself to him because I wanted to meet him and I asked him if he would sing on the album and he said he'd love to. So I was going to go to LA to do some overdubs anyway. So we arranged to get together then, and he came in and he did exactly what I hoped he would do. Came up with some great melody and harmony ideas. So that was a real thrill for me. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm still a fan of these people, and I still get a thrill from working with my heroes, you know. And I'm lucky that I get the, ch the chance to do that. Clapton um, is, a, is a real old friend of mine. I've, I consider him one of my best friends, and that, um, we've known each other for about 10, 11 years now. And uh, he was complaining to me, just in fun, that I never ask him to play on my records, you know, because I usually have Daryl Sturmer play guitar, and uh, he's the guy who plays in my band. But Eric, Eric did actually play on one song on Face Value, but you can really hardly hear him. But um, so I said, yeah, and I actually had written a, a song, I Wish It Would Rain Down, which is a kind of a blues, the closest I get to the blues anyway. And I thought maybe he would be great on that, so he came down and played on it. 
Stephen Bishop is, um, he sings on the album as well, and he's, a, again, an old friend. I mean, most of these people are, I only get down to do the stuff because they're buddies, you know. They're sort of, I like what he does, and I like to have him on the album. And so he came down and sang on a couple of songs, one of which is on the album, one of which has yet to come out. But um, he's got a wonderful voice, and he writes great songs, and we're good pals. You are all the woman that I need. Just look at you. Hair done. Taste and clothes are impeccable. But you know what makes me happy, baby? Do you know what really makes me happy? I love it when you dance. Mama, when you Winwood, I had, didn't really know that well. I did a gig, a local charity gig. We do an annual event down here in Surrey. And uh, the first year we did it, we had Clapton and me and Brooker, Gary Brooker from Procol Harum and Rutherford and Andy Fair with the Lower, a whole bunch of people. We all get together, learn each other's songs. We did other Princess Trust gigs. Did it for charity, our open air sh- uh, show just down the, down the road. This year, we had uh, Winwood playing with us as well. And uh, I met him a few times, but we got to know each other better during that two or three days rehearsal for the show. And he said that he'd never been asked to do anything else, really. You know, I said I was surprised I didn't see him play on more, more people's stuff, you know, other outside projects. And he said that he'd never been asked. So I asked him if he'd like to sing, you know, play on, on my album, and he came down. So really, they're just, you know, these people are usually around if you just ask them, you know. If you want to do it, just ask. Could we want, run through the tracks one by one for your yep. comments? Sure. Um, we've already touched on some of these already. Hmm. The first one is um, hanging long enough. I love R&B, and, and I, my writing, I, I'm fascinated by the, the way R&B music is written. I mean, there's very little going on in most good R&B, and it's very hard for a white boy from Hounslow to write rhythm and blues, you know. So I try my best at sort of seeing if I can get closer to it, and hanging long enough is one of those sort of songs. And what about, uh, that's just the way it is, particularly the topic and David yeah. Crosby's vocal? Well, Crosby we talked about why, why I got him in. I thought it was a tailor-made song for him, both socially and also, um, uh, you know, it would give a lot of space for harmonies because there's not much going on on the song. Um, the subject matter, <clears throat> I've got relatives that serve in Northern Ireland and um, I kind of... In England, more so than in the States, we, we live with this terrorism all the day, all, every day, much more so than in the States. So, it's just that the seemingly uh, pointless and cheap value that's put on life, you know, just, uh, it just kind of angers me. I'm sure it angers everybody, but I mean, I've got the opportunity to write a song about it. I mean, it's that... Um, Nothing is really worth that, you know. Whatever is the problem, we must be able to sort it out without endless people just getting blown up, you know. Just, where, where does it end? What about something happened on the way to heaven? Um, <clears throat> well, that was the last song I wrote, actually, for the album, and that, I originally thought I was going to give it to the Four Tops to do, because I said to them that I'd write some songs for them. And I, st- I still think that they could do it very well, because it's kind of a 60s type of song. Um, or it could be treated in that way. The intro of the song was written, I wrote in 1978, but never used. It just shows you that some bits can actually come back from the dead, you know, and you think you're never going to use them, but they always find a, a home eventually. Um, the lyrics I wrote for a Danny DeVito film, but um, he didn't feel that the song was quite right for the film. So I kept it anyway, because I liked it. <laughs> Danny! But in the, in the end, I actually, he gave me a subject to write uh, the song about, you know, which was people getting overtaken by material possessions and sort of realising that while they're getting so infatuated with what... It's a bit like hang, hanging long enough in greed and, greed and ambition. You get so prepossessed by what you're doing 
that what you're living with, the person you're living with, ends up taking a back seat and then it's all too late, you know. What about Do You Remember? The song is uh, about looking back on, a, on the breakup of a relationship, I suppose, as to why it happened. Um, there's a lot of stuff gets said and all the sh and you know, when a relationship stops or ends. But uh, it's only passing of time that you can actually look back on it and actually do understand why it stopped or, or you can own up to the fact of whose fault it was. And what about colours and the South African topic? Right. Well, there's two halves of colours, really. It was two separate songs which I joined together because they were about the same topic. And one, the first part is really trying to get people to remember that you say the sort of famine and South Africa thing and Ethiopian thing. You see this footage of people starving and being badly treated. You just think of it as being them over there. That it's happening over there and you they become a, a group of people without any individual identities and each one of these people have a name you know they all have a person that's related to them they all have a mum and dad they have their own little story and people tend to forget about that and it's just bringing that to people's attention or reminding people that they should remember that um, and the other part of the song the second half of the song is um, it's kind of an angry look at just exactly what's going on over there and asking why, how come, you know, when all these changes are supposed to be happening and all these reforms, how come nothing ever seems to get any better? What about I wish it would rain down? Well, that was my blues, really. Uh, I think it's the, the idea of the lyric is just when um, you meet someone on the street, maybe your first girlfriend or boyfriend, you know, you meet them on the street and it suddenly unleashes all those feelings that you had about them and um, maybe even you've become friends with somebody and you that you used to go out with or whatever you got back to friendly terms having stopped being with them and you just thought you'd pass by and visit without and they suddenly realize you're upsetting the person that you're talking to you know because it's unleashing those feelings inside them and uh the you know obviously the person's regret at doing that you know so i wish it would rain down and what about another day in paradise well that's a song uh about homelessness really and and people's inability to deal with it i mean awkwardness in dealing with it that's to say the person that is not homeless you know he walks down the street and he's you have and myself included without thinking about it you tend to walk by pretending you don't see it or to cross the street pretending you don't see it or wanting to get away from it and blotting it out and i think people do that i have done it in recent memory um and I hate myself for doing it, but it's, it's just, you just do it without thinking. And I, you know, it's just, there are an awful lot of people out there that aren't down and outs or drug addicts or alcoholics that are homeless. And it's just such a big problem and getting a bigger problem every day. That, uh, and unless people remember that it's happening and think about it and try not to avoid it, then it will only get worse. And is this to be the first single yeah. from the album? And you've done a video? The idea will be to show, apart from my performance, which is hopefully a small part of it, it will be to show pictures of this happening. It should be, it should hit you in the face, really. These pictures from all over the world, not just New York, London, but Rio, Russia, the Vietnamese boat people, you know, people leaving East Germany, all kinds of different variations on homelessness. Let's take it back. Let's take it back. Not long ago. 
ago We had a sound That had a soul Then they got fancy and forgot the groove But I brought it back To make you want you to funk with me Funk with me Funk with me Yeah, funk with me It's all homelessness. And what about all of my life? All of my life is another barrel of laughs. Um, they're not all down songs, these, actually. I mean, there's, there's, quite, there's a lot of optimism involved in a lot of these songs, although they're quite serious subjects. All my life is really a, um, is a self-dissection, um, if you like. I mean, it's, a, it's just th me criticising me of all the things that I should have said, should have done, never did. And find a way to my heart? Uh, find a way to my heart is um, the lyric is really about the little smoke screens that we put up between um, us and our mates. You know, uh, when you first meet somebody, there's an amazing amount of bullshit goes on. You know, you know I don't want to be seen to be you know too forward, or I don't want to. Should I push? Should I be forward? Should I say this? Should I look like that? There's kind of smoke screens you put up between people, and, and uh, if you can, the, the song is really is if you can get through that smoke screen, if you can find a way to my heart. I'm yours. And finally, what about father to son? Well, that was, um, that's for Simon. He's, he's my 13-year-old son. And I don't live with my two children. I, mean, I live with Lily because she's from my, my marriage now. But uh, I've got two kids from my first marriage and they live in Canada. And I've kind of, they've grown up, not without me, but they've grown up only seeing me two or three times a year and also on the phone once a week. So really what I did was just write a little guide to life, you know, a little sort of be ready for this, you know, if your heart is beating fast, then you know that she's the right one. What are your future plans? My future plans? Well, there's a tour, um, which will be starting around, you know, rehearsals January, February, and we'll start touring at the end of February, through till September, really, on and off. And um, that'll be going all over the world. And then I hope to do this film, I would imagine that by that time the script will be finished. Film's a very long-winded business. I mean, I hope to do that film, Three Bears, maybe at the end of next year. If not, I'll be doing some other film. I want to do something uh, along those lines, you know, in the film world, because I just had such a great time with Buster. So the Three Bears will happen at some point. So we're looking around to spring of 91 for a Genesis album, probably. We have to put a little time limits on ourselves. We have to sort of have some kind of date just to aim for. And at the moment, spring 91 is, is that date for Genesis. After that, I couldn't tell you, but that's long enough to go home with, isn't it? Well, thank you very that's much. Good luck. Cheers.